Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Chris here. Uh, coming back with a new video. Wanted to touch on a couple things, uh, sports related stuff. This is gonna be a sports heavy one. Um, gonna talk a little bit about WrestleMania, my thoughts about what I liked, what I didn't like. It will not be a comprehensive match recap or anything like that because I don't have eight hours to go through like all those matches. I don't have time for all that. So I'm gonna go through what I liked and didn't like, and then I'm gonna go through and I've gotta go through some some uh, baseball news. Uh so I'm gonna start with the baseball news. Uh it's it's mostly Orioles based because co quite frankly, that's my team, that's what I follow. Um but it's going to cover, kind of cover the Oakland A's as well. So the, the, and the reason I say it's going to kind of touch on the Oakland A's is this. Um, the Orioles traded a couple of relief pitchers, Tanner Scott and Cole Solcer, to the Miami Marlins for two prospects, a player to be named later, and a competitive balance um, pick. The competitive balance pick gives them in this year's draft five draft picks in the next in the next draft before pick number seventy five. That's quite a haul of players you can get for that type of money, for the money. And when you're in a rebuild and when you're building your farm system and trying to keep that farm system sustained at at the top ranked farm system, which they are per MLB's rankings, we have the top farm system in baseball. You want to get as many draft picks coming in and out of that system as much as possible. Um, so, I mean, it's a, it's a good trade. They got back a 17-year-old kid, ton of potential there. 25-year-old pitcher who just debuted in AA. Still could be something. Maybe, maybe not. Player to be named later, so we don't know what that, who that player is going to be yet. But the most important piece of that, dra of that acquisition, acquisition is the draft pick. And the 17-year-old kid. Buster Olney of ESPN decided to lose his shit online about this pick. About this trade. And it's like, dude, we traded a 31-year-old relief pitcher who just got himself together last year. He was his closer. And a guy with an ERA of 5 last season who is... Super inconsistent. We don't know what he's going to do every game. He could come in and throw lights out every bad game. And then the next game he comes in, he could walk the bases loaded and give up a, like a ton of runs. Like he couldn't trust them. We traded them for prospects. Okay. This is what we've done. It's two relief pitchers. Relief pitchers. We're not like the Oakland A's where... The Oakland A's have traded their starting third baseman, their starting third baseman, first baseman, and two of their best starting pitchers just the past couple of months. Buster only has said not a goddamn word about that. He hadn't said a word about the Pittsburgh Pirates basically manipulating O'Neill Cruz's service time. By sending him to the minors when he played at the end. He was a December call-up last year. He looked good last year. He's killing it this spring. The Seattle Mariners just promoted Julio Rodriguez to their main ro to their major league roster. He's going to be starting a center field for them at 21 years old. Because he's having that good of a spring. Adley Rutschman. Would have been the starting catcher for the Baltimore Orioles this year, but he got hurt early in spring training, and he's not even going to be starting in AAA yet. He's got to get 100% healthy, and then he's got to get himself back into shape, and then they'll bring him up. But he was going to be our starting catcher this year, period. And everybody knows it. If, you, if you're going to trash the Orioles, who, by the way, the last time they had a big-time payroll was 2017, they lost 115 games that year with all-star players and all these great players and stuff like that with the high payroll. They're in the middle of a rebuild. 
They are rebuilding their franchise from the ground up, from the minor leagues up, all the way from the barren farm system that wouldn't bring in shit. They had nothing. And they've gone from nothing to the top farm system in baseball. Six players in the top 100, including the number one overall prospect and the number one pitching prospect in Grayson Rodriguez. Atley goes up to number one because Bobby Witt Jr., who was the number one, is on the Major League roster for the Royals. So everybody got bumped up one. So Atley's number one now. So we got the number one prospect in baseball, the number one pit, the hitting prospect, the number one pitching prospect in baseball, and four other players in the top 100. And again, the number one farm system, which means from top to bottom, we've got players coming. Because the idea is sustained success. No, we may not win every year. No, we may not be good right now. But in a couple years, we're going to be good. And we're going to be able to sustain it because we have a farm system that sustains that talent level. Just a little bit of a background on Buster Olney, because I know why he's doing this, okay? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know a little bit of a secret. Buster Olney used to work at the Baltimore Sun, the local newspaper here in, ba- in Maryland, okay? The Sun, you call it the Sun, or whatever you want to call it, the Sun, Baltimore Sun. I grew up with it being the Baltimore Sun. I just call it the Sun. He lasted here. He was a beat writer for the Orioles. He only lasted about a year. Because he was trash. He wasn't good. And they canned his ass after a year. And he went to ESPN off of some name recognition he had from being a writer for the a big time major paper. And he's been basically bad at his job since. Because his takes are terrible. Peter Gammons blew him out of the water as an analyst. Like, Buster only is a joke. Anyway... Like, if you're gonna, Buster, if you're gonna call out one for being bad, you gotta call out the others. But you won't say a goddamn word about the Pirates or about the A's because you don't have beef with those cities. You got beef with Baltimore, and that's why you're running your mouth about us. Period. It's weak shit. If you're gonna call us out for being bad, you best go after them too. So take that shit to Oakland and call out their management for what they're doing. They've traded away four of their best players in the past two months and really haven't gotten a lot back for it. They really haven't, not for what they could have gotten. So those are my thoughts on Buster Olney. Dude doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's what I'm going to say about that. On to WrestleMania. Now, I'm going to go through the matches I liked first. Stone Cold Kevin Owens. I loved it. I'm a Stone Cold guy. Everybody knows me knows. I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. That was my guy. Um, Even more than The Rock. Even more than a lot of those other guys. Stone Cold was my guy. He was just that dude. So seeing him not only come back after 19 years, but to not just have a brawl, but to have an actual match and get the retirement match that he deserved. That was cool as shit to see. Um, Edge and AJ Styles. Love that match. Love that match. I love Edge. The new Edge thing. I don't know where it's going, but I dug it. I dug the AJ Styles and him just had that fucking back and forth. I loved it. Seth Rollins and the debuting or returning Cody Rhodes. Good match. It's a nice back and forth. It was a good match. Exactly what you expect. Seth is a great is great at what he does. Cody is good at what he does. I'm not the biggest Cody fan, but he's solid in the ring, and that's all that really matters. And he he showed it. 
Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair. I like that match. Um, what I didn't like. I didn't like Charlotte and Ronda Rousey. If I had to pick a match that I could not fucking stand, that would be the one that I fucking hated more than anything. And the reason is, Ronda Rousey is bad at what she does, and Charlotte didn't give a fuck. You, you could see it in everything she did in that match. It was just not there. It was just... Charlotte hasn't given a fuck in a long time. And it's been obvious. Like, she's just coasting on her dad's name and the legacy of the Flair name. And that's it. And Ronda Rousey is just not good at wrestling. She's not. She's not good at it. She's not good at MMA either. But she's really bad at wrestling. Like... She's just, I, this didn't belong on WrestleMania. If it wasn't for the fact that Ronda Rousey is Ronda Rousey and Charlotte is who she is, they would have been bumped to like earlier in the card. And Becky Lynch made made did an interview where she said she was going to prove that, that she's better than they were her and Bianca Belair were going to have the better match. I guarantee you, she told the fucking truth and she went out there and backed it up because she did. Um, for real, like, the NXT title match at Stand and Deliver was better than Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey. And that, that's ridiculous. Like, Mandy Rose had a better match than, I think, Joey Numbers from Wrestling Soup. Shout out to Joey Numbers and the Wrestling Soup guys. Um, and Kevin Castle and the legendary Don Tony. Shout out to those guys because uh, Joey Nubba said that t said it and he said it too. Mandy Rose would have a better match that weekend, <laughs> this past weekend, than Charlotte Fetter. And damn it, she did. So did Becky Lynch. Becky backed up her shit and manned up and did the, did the damn thing. Um, I wasn't as big a fan of Brock and Roman as I thought I would be. I like Roman. I like the fact that he's dominant, this dominant champion. I dig it. But I don't know. It just kind of ended out of nowhere. And I thought it would get more time. So that that's that. Um, Johnny Knoxville, Sami Zayn. I, it was what I expected it to be. It was a fun, fun match. But it wasn't really a match. Um, the Ridge Holland... Sheamus and then a New Day match that was uh I didn't like that either. I, I figured it would go a little bit longer that those guys, New Day guys, would get a little bit more in on in, in Ridge Island. Like some this is for Big E motherfucker, and they would kind of fuck him up a little bit, and that didn't happen. And that was disappointing. Um so those are my I, I, I'm not gonna listen. I'm not gonna go through everything at WrestleMania because there were like too much shit over two days, and honestly, I have to I'd have to rewatch everything to do like the whole thing, and I'm not devoting a whole day to that because, quite frankly, I'm trying to find a job. <laughs> still, the job hunt continues. By the way, I'm still looking. Uh, I've got a couple prospects that are looking good, so we will see. I've got one. Uh, lined up for Thursday, and it looks like it might be a pretty good prospect. So I'm looking to see what happens. Uh, I've got a couple other things in the fire. We'll see something will pan out or it won't. And I'll just either the, the, the job hunt will continue, or I'll have something and I could devote some time. But for right now... The, that that part continues so a little bit into my personal life that continues again um last week i did get married um to everyone who has sent out any type of shout out um um everybody who sent congratulations or sent well wishes and all that stuff from the bottom of my heart thank you it means a lot Thank you so much for that love for my wife and I. Um, it, it means a lot. 
Um, it was a, a last minute thing that we did, but it was the right thing to do. And it was something that we've been waiting to do for a long time. And it was good to finally, um, finally do it. It was even better to have like, um, my friends there and my dad. I wish other people could have made it, but they had to work. And to those people, I promise we're going to do something in the next year that's going to be more of a bigger thing for like the families and stuff like that. I promise. Because I want to do that so that my grandmothers can actually see me get married. Um, they're getting up there in years and uh, that I, I know that that would mean something to them and I know it means something to like a lot of people to see me actually go down and actually get married. So that's something that's going to happen, you know, or at least a renewing of vows or something. I don't know how that's going to, I don't know if we can do a marriage when you're already married, but I think we can do like a renewal of vows and they can be there for that or something. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Excuse me. But that that's pretty much that. Um again, uh like I said, everybody who sent those shout outs, those are just my thoughts on a couple things that I was on my mind. Uh like I said again, to everyone who said something or congratulated relations, sent that will wishes and love and support. I appreciate it. On, on everything, quite frankly, not just that, just the job thing and all that, you know, thank you for reaching out. Um, so that that's pretty much all I've got, man. Um, thank you. Um, thank you for taking and watching my video. For anyone watching these things, thank you for taking the time to watch or comment or, or sharing these or whatever you're doing. I, I appreciate you. I don't know if you're if you if you get that a lot out there. The world can be pretty cold and heartless sometimes, but know that I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. I appreciate you taking the time to even give a damn what I have to say about something. I appreciate you for being in some way a part of this journey that I'm going on with these. So thank you. And I appreciate you. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Peace.